We do start with the trade war taking down the market again today. President Trump expected to announce a fresh round of tariffs any moment. Elon Moy in D.C. with the details as we wait for that announcement. Elon. Scott, well, we are waiting for that to come out soon. The president had said it would come out after market close. My colleague Eamon Javers had reported earlier that we should be looking for a 10 percent tariff, but that number could potentially go higher. And President Trump gave a little hint of what was to come earlier today when he said a lot of money is going to be flowing into the United States. You're going to see on China today, uh, right after close of business, we'll be announcing something, uh, and it will be a lot of money coming into the coffers of the United States of America. A lot of money coming in. But you'll be seeing what we're doing uh, right after close of business today. The market's closing. Now, about half of the products on the original list of tariffs that was proposed over the summer were intermediate goods. About 29 percent was capital equipment, and about a quarter of the products were consumer goods, and that included popular products like Apple Watches and Fitbits. There have been multiple reports today that those products are now off the list and safe from tariffs. Now, businesses have been mounting an aggressive campaign to stop the tariffs in their tracks or at the very least slow them down. Scott, we will see if that's had any impact. Back over to you. Okay, Elon, thanks so much. Back with you as needed. And the markets certainly think the trade war is on. The Dow closing down more than 100 points. It's near the lows of the day. Tech getting hit the hardest today. NASDAQ falling about a percent. Guy Adami, what do you make all this? I guess it's coming to fruition. Yeah, well, on Friday you were here, and welcome back again. You know, the VIX closed at 12. Today it closed north of 13 and a half. So the VIX is finally saying maybe the risk is not priced in. And, and I'll say this again, and listen, they could strike a deal next week, and I'll look like a jerk, which I've done many times over the last not 11 years. <laughs> not because of that. Excellent point by you. They may not but my, my question is, why do you think the Chinese need to make any deal in the environment that we find ourselves in? I think... They have staying power, and they're in it for the long term. So I'm not – I think President Trump plays the same uh, – with the same set of rules that he's played with everybody. I think this is a much different adversary. Karen, uh, Kudlow today, Economic Club, and speaking to our Becky Quick earlier today, said they're just waiting on the Chinese to come to the table. And as Guy said, there's no indication right. at this point – that they're ready to do it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I one thing that really disturbed me today was him saying a lot of money flowing into the coffers. I hate that Trump looks at the trade war that way. To me, it is just a tax on the consumer. Somewhere along the line, we're getting taxed. Which, what happens right? if he which, took the consumer which goods the off the table? Oh, which the former Somewhere. Larry Kudlow uh, used to say as well, that tariffs were a tax. Yeah. Yes, right. right. I, you know, I don't think he's, he, uh, he's not controlling the tax conversation, it seems. I mean, I, I'm not opposed to the idea of having a better tariff policy or trade policy, rather. I'm not a fan of tariffs. We seem to have such a haphazard policy that it's really hard for companies to know what to do. So to me, that rightfully should be weighing on the market. I mean, even Office Depot today talking about from you're, you're talking about consumer end products, uh, the cost of chairs, for example, uh, going up significantly right. uh, as a result of the tariffs we're already seeing. So but, there but is a broad impact. The bigger question, Steve, is. What's the market impact going to be? What's the earnings impact going to be? The multiple, how is we all of that We haven't seen impacted? that yet. We haven't seen the market, true market impact yet. And we've seen these tariffs in talk, 25% go down to 10%. So in theory, it's, it sounds like it's a negative headwind. I would say that the market should have already priced it in. It's surprising to me that Priced the market. What, I don't think the market knows what? what to price in. That's well, the problem, it's discounted. Right? The, every time you see one of these tariff headlines go across the tape, you see the algos kick in and you see the market sell off. So I would have thought that 25% on the goods that we're talking about is already priced in. You thought 25 or 10? Because no, I think 25. It, because that was the original statement, right? It was 25, and now he says 10. On so, 200 billion? Yeah. So I think no, I think I, it's I think at this point though that's got to be a win or at least a less of a headwind to the consumer here. And now, if they're taking 25 percent of it off the table on consumer goods, that's even more of a tailwind. So a negative situation that's getting slightly more positive. Well, I, I tell you what, I, I think that if 25 percent was priced in, the S and P would be you know, seven or eight percent lower. Uh, because I think the bottom line is, I, I agree with you on the gamesmanship here. I mean, you know, I think 10% is going to come through here because there's no way they could get through 25%. And again, the back, the back story on these trade tariffs is that this is a supplemental investigation, which changes the entire timing of it. It forces these decisions to come out. There are laws that say this is what you have to do if this is, and there are, there's a timeline. So for people wondering why we are here, and ultimately, if you believe that the Chinese, and I think this is similar to people on the desk here, I think the Chinese have been laying back, and actually they're supposed to be sending someone to speak with Mnuchin, 
except for the fact that if 10% is tacked on another 200 billion, that guy might not ever show up. And I don't think that the Chinese are going to negotiate with fresh tariffs. Question is, who, 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 has, who has the leverage in all right. this? You could, you could look at the, the broad decline in the uh, Chinese market, in the Asian market, and say, no, we have the leverage. Or you can flip it and say, well, the Chinese don't have to come to the table if they don't want to come to the table. So maybe they have the leverage. Right. So I, I would think that we still have the leverage. Even though they might be able to outweigh us, I don't think they want to. I don't think they, they serve any purpose Isn't by that what they're doing us. right now? Waiting? Well, they're waiting because they don't even know where he's coming at them from right now. It's been such a moving target. So are they waiting? Yes. But how, how much longer will they wait? I don't think this is going to be a four-year wait, a, a two-year wait, or wait till Trump is out of office wait. So I don't think that's the negative. Could be a post-midterm wait. That would, at the, at the bare there's minimum. where they should have the leverage. But to Guy's point, the pushback is I think that he is softening behind the scenes to China, giving them reasons to actually get something done that we're not hearing about. My, my view is this is not even about the intermediate goods. I mean, Elon broke down kind of what's what, what's actually really at risk here. I think this is all about made in China 2025. I think this is all about supremacy of both the Internet and, and data and technology in this century. Therefore... I don't think we're going to solve this. I think both sides are going to dig it aggressively because both sides see this as a very strategic issue of national significance. Can you say that one of the reasons why the market gets in these modes where it spins its wheels a bit, even though, you know, you got these five straight up days for the S&P, if you look at the types of things that are leading the market, because we're still worried about trade. If you, if you, you can't really break out hard uh, to the upside because you're not really sure what the earnings impact is going to be on various sectors. Flip side of that yeah. is though we're 1% from the all-time high, and the market's just basically going up for the last 10 years. I, I can make an argument. To, I think what you, Tim, said, we should be down 8 to 10% just from the rhetoric we're hearing, and we're not. So the market trades Because the economic well. fundamental story right. is so strong. Right. The, Why it, wasn't Cat no Tractor question. down today? Why it, wasn't it, Boeing down today? Why wasn't the FXI down more today if it was all trade? Which I came in on the opening thought it was all trade but that doesn't mean to me when you saw the market action that it was really trade that was leading the market lower today. I don't know in any one given day why it wasn't down but the concerning thing to me is a couple of things in this economy. We have real we have a really great economy but the other thing that, it, that, that has allowed Trump to have such a strong economy is businesses feeling better and more secure about the environment whether it's pro-business or anti-business versus prior administrations. Now that that's being clouded because we don't know what our trade policy is that, to me, is a threat to the market. I don't know about today, but in the future it is.